confused. He was supposed to teach. Oh, now we're recording, uh, but he wasn't able to be with us this evening. So I'm stepping in to teach you how to crochet the Karen geometric geometric grid crochet shawl. It's a really lovely pattern. It's a pretty simple crochet pattern. Um, it calls for Karen skinny cakes and I believe an eye hook. I didn't happen to have any Karen skinny cakes on hand myself. Um, so today I'll be using Karen big cakes and a slightly larger hook. I'll be using a J hook. I went up two sizes just like they did in the pattern um, from the recommended size. This will be a little bit easier for us to see on camera as well. So keep in mind the original yarn for this pattern is a little bit thinner with a smaller hook. I'm just using what I have on hand to demo with today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Lillian, who's got some official things to say before we get started. Thanks, Tamara. And again, thank you for jumping in with us today. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have Tamara from Moodly Blog with us ready for another exciting class. And as she said, we'll be cro crocheting the geometric grid crochet shawl in pineapple lace. My name is Lillian from Yarnspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. So feel free to ask questions in the chat here, and we'll be sure that Tamara answers them. Thanks. Back to you. Okay. So since I don't have the finished shawl to show you today, hopefully you took a look at the free download that was there when you signed up for the program, uh, for the class rather, and then hopefully they send it to you along with the uh, class information today. And failing that, they can throw it into the chat. So let's go ahead and go over to the overhand camera. Uh, Ash, if you could go ahead and switch us to that. And then I do have a printout here. So you can see a little picture of the pattern that we're going to be working on. And there's a couple things that I want to point out on the pattern itself. If you'll note right here that we start with a chain of 189 loosely. We are going to have to chain very, very loosely for this pattern. They also wonderfully include the multiple. It's a multiple of 10 chains plus nine. See diagram on page two. And when I looked at page two, I was so pleased with this because this sort of diagram for this sort of pattern, a grid pattern like this, um, uh, it's a fillet sort of pattern. This is going to be um, so much easier to follow on the crochet graph rather than following the written words. That said, if you don't know how to read these, you can absolutely follow along with the written instructions. If you haven't looked at these, this sort of instruction before, you'll want to take note of the stitch key right above it. This shows you what each one of these little symbols mean. That little oval circle there, that means a chain, the T, that is a half double crochet, and the T with two little lines right through the middle is a treble crochet. So those are the only three stitches you're going to need to know to work on this pattern. So because we cannot start with 189 chains, that would take us half the class right there. We're going to go ahead and just make the abbreviated version right here. So before I go ahead and get started, I'm actually going to start with three multiples. And that means, according to this multiple plate of here, a multiple of 10 plus 9, that means I need 39 chains to begin our first row. So I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot on my hook and chain out to 39. But I saw a couple of questions pop up. So Lillian, were there any questions I could answer while I'm just simply chaining out these 39 chains here? Yeah, so we're looking at the uh, pattern and color. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elaine asked, can you specify the blue versus the black? Ah, okay. Let's see here. Hard to do that and count at the same time. Uh, yes, on the uh, on the chart here, I presume, is what you're referring to. It's harder to see here, I think, on the camera than it is in person. Um, but if you look closely, you can see every other row is in blue. And that's just going to help you figure out which direction you're going. When you're following a ch crochet chart, you start down here with this little chain down here by itself. And then you chain. Those are all those chains across, and they come up and around. And then you start crocheting down into those chains. It's really a visual representation of what you are crocheting. Um, so then you see there's more chains here, etc. So this right here, you can see this one here at this end. This means this is row one. And this little two here, this means going across in blue is row two. So unless they've got some secret code they're using over at Yarnspirations, the black and the blue here is just to help you read that pattern a little bit easier visually and tell at a glance row one, row two, row three, row four, just a little bit easier. This pattern, again, does call for 
a USI hook and Karen Skinny Cakes, which is a DK weight yarn. I did not personally have that available in my stash today, so I'm using Karen Big Cakes. And uh, what did I pick up? A J hook, a six millimeter hook. So I just went up a couple sizes, um, a couple sizes there as they did here when they were writing that pattern. Um, was there another question I could answer here while I do my, my chaining out? Uh, there was a quick question here from Pickle asking how to make a slip knot. I've ah. just pop, popped in a link um, with oh, an instructional excellent. video. Okay. Uh, if anybody would like to take a look at that, but if you want to show Tamara, please do. Okay, sure. Let's go ahead and do that here. Let me move this out of the way because I found out the camera won't won't focus if it's behind my hands here. So I'm just going to take my length of yarn here, and I'm going to come in about six inches from the end. And right there, I want to take my yarn and form a hook, right? Or a loop rather. Sorry, I glanced down at the chat in red instead of saying we formed a loop. Then I'm going to pull the end of the yarn behind that loop right there. And then I want to grab it right in the center of that loop and pull up. Now you want to be careful as you pull up on that loop that you don't accidentally pull that end through. We want it to come down into that little knot. Then we're going to insert our hook and pull down on those ends until that loop is just a hair bigger than our hook itself, like so. There we are. We want to have a little wiggle room there. We don't want it to be super tight on our hook, but you don't want it to be, you know, super hanging off loose either. Just a little bit of daylight there right in between. So as I said, we're going to start with a chain of 39 and we need to make sure that we're chaining these really loosely. So we want to take our time and yarn over and pull through and there's one chain and then just give that a little tug before you make the next one. So there's two, give it a little extra tug, three and keep chaining until you have a total of 39 chains made. So we just yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through. But try and keep, keep your tension a little loose. Keep your hands a little looser. Keep your arms a little more relaxed than you might normally when you're making your chains. Just keep working until you have a total of 39 here. So now that I'm chaining on camera, are there any other questions I can answer? I saw one pop up. Somebody says, good question, but I didn't catch what the question was. Oh, let me take a look. Mm. <laughs> ah, um, this one, I'm not sure that either of us can answer, but uh, the question is, the what to bring supplies listed a G hook. Ah. Perhaps Ash might, be, might know for us. Um, is there a reason for the change from the pattern recommendation? My, uh, my best guess would be a misprint. Um, on yeah. Writing up the... Uh, writing up the listing on the class. Um, that said, if, you know, since we're just making this little swatch today, I would say go ahead and use what you've got available. If you like the stitches you're getting, um, or if you're just making the swatch size, then we're just practicing sort of the stitch pattern today here. So we just wanna make sure to keep those loose. The original pattern um, as written does call for an I hook. I am using a J hook because I am using a bigger yarn, a thicker yarn. Here we are, and it looks like um, there's some other, you know, the list of materials there may or may not have the correct hook size. But again, you can use whatever works with whatever you are working with today. So let's see, I am going to see where I'm at here real quick. I'm going to uh, count silently so that I don't mess up your counting as you're getting to 39. Okay, I've got six more to go for me. So I just wanna, again, try and keep those a little looser than I normally would. Four, and there we go. I should have 39 chains on made here. So we've got our long row of chains made, and in our chart, that's represented right here. These are all these little ovals that come up and around. So if we go to our written instructions, or if you look at that chart, 
you'll see that you start by then putting a half double crochet in the 10th chain from the hook. So we need to count back 10 chains from our hook. Now this color is a little dark, but you want to try and look at those individual chains. And when I work into that chain, especially with something like this, where we don't work a final border around the end of our project, I really recommend that you work into the bottom hump of the chain. A lot of times when we learn how to crochet, we start out by crocheting under the top two loops of the chain. I prefer to work under the back hump, especially as I say, when it's a project like this, where we're not going to be working a final border around it, because this will give a nicer finished edge on our finished project, because we'll have those two loops on the bottom. And then if you do decide to work a border around it, it's even easier to work those border stitches in there. So I'm going to count out 10 different, or 10 rather, of these stitches away from my hook here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that chain right there is where I want to put my first half double crochet. That is a pretty long, uh, long jump here. So you can see it's a little wobbly. I'm just going to kind of use my other fingers here as best I can to get my yarn over on my hook and then get that hook in that chain. There we are. Now I can hold it like I normally would. There we are and yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three to finish that half double crochet. So now we've gotten past that little bit of awkwardness right there. Now those uh, nine stitches that we skipped, those nine chains are going to count as a uh, treble and a chain three. So what does that mean? That means this would be a good time to pull up a stitch marker if you have one available. And what I want you to do now is go ahead and count back three stitches. This is going to sound a little, a little weird, but count back three of those chains before the stitch you just made, that half double crochet. So we've got one, two, three. Those are going to be the three chains we skipped. So that means that fourth one, the very next one, is going to be at the top of the treble, the quote unquote treble. So if you go ahead and put a stitch marker in that fourth chain back right there, you can see there's our stitch. We've got one, two, three, and then the marked chain. When you come back along for row two, it's going to be a lot easier to find the top of that, you know, basically that treble to work back into. You won't have to you know, finagle and count through those chains quite as much. You can do it when you come back for the second row, but I, I'm a big fan of using stitch markers. I find it keeps my edges really nice and straight. So we've got our first half double crochet made. Now we need to work, let's see, an, a half double crochet in each of the next six chains. So that means we'll be doing a total of seven here in this little section. So we've got one, then we find the next one, and go right in there for a half double crochet, insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. So there's two. Yarn over, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. So there's three. And just keep going here until we've got seven of those made. So as I continue to make those half double crochets, are there any questions I can answer? They always are. Mm -hmm. um, there is a very good question here from Linda asking, uh, what's the size difference between skinny cakes and big cakes? Um, well, when I looked it up, it said the skinny cakes were a DK or a three weight, I believe, um, If and the big cakes is a four. Let me see if I can squeeze this on camera. It's a pretty big cake, literally. Um, so it's pretty tall here on the, on the table. But if you look at the skinny cakes uh, label, you'll see, I believe it is a three right there in that little yarn symbol, meaning it's a lighter weight yarn. This big cakes uh, is a four or a medium weight yarn. So that means it's one size up in thickness. Um, in the instructions, when I looked at them, I saw that the skinny cakes called for an eye hook, which was two, size longer, two sizes larger than what was recommended on the label. So when I moved up to this yarn, I went for a hook size that was two, size, two sizes larger than what was recommended on this label. So that's just the hook size used recommended um, to obtain this gauge. It's kind of a good jumping off point, a good starting point, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the hook size you always use with this yarn. It's just sort of a, 
a good reference point to uh, jump off of from there. When you're using a bigger hook than recommended, um, as we are in this pattern, it helps to create a much more drapey and soft and uh, flexible fabric. So that's little trick designers use. We bump up the hook size to make those stitches a little bigger and it makes a really nice drapey fabric, um, more so than if you use generally the hook size recommended on the label. So one, two, three, four, five. Were there any other questions I could answer here before we continue on? There is one more question here from mm -hmm. Catherine. Um, she asked, uh, what does hook size needed to obtain gauge mean? I've answered, but perhaps you'll be able to answer better, I think. Um, well, hook size um, to obtain gauge, let's pull that label back up here because that's got such a great example here. Um, that means that, for instance, if you used an H hook with this yarn and had an average run of the mill tension level as you crocheted, then in a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square, also known as a four inch by four inch square, you would have 14 rows of 13 single crochet. So if you crocheted a big swatch with an eight with an H hook in this yarn and you had average tension, then you measured out a four inch by four inch section, it would be 13 single crochets across and 14 rows tall. So that is sort of the the gauge jumping off point. Again, when you use a bigger hook than recommended, you're going to get a looser, drapier fabric. When you use a smaller hook than recommended, you can do that to get a tighter fabric. Like if you want to make something like a basket or something that was stiff that really did stand up on its own, then you can drop down to a smaller hook size. So you, that's just one of those things you can play with a little bit, especially with a pattern like this where you've got a uh, stitch multiple, so you can change the size easily if you want to and really play with your hook and yarn choices to get the fabric that you'd like to have. Okay, so if we come back here to our little chart, you can see here are those seven half double crochets we made. Then we can look at our chart and see we have one, two, three, four, five, six chains to make. And when we make those six chains, we're going to skip three chains right there. So note that we're, we're making six chains, but we're only skipping three chains. That's where these chains needed to be really loose. These chains don't need to be so loose. We want to come back in and just make six regular chains for us here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to skip three of these chains. So we've got one, two, three, and then we're going to half double crochet in the next seven. So we come to that fourth one, yarn over, and go right in there. A little bit easier without that long line of chains flopping around behind us to keep a hold of it. Oops, although I still managed to drop it off my hook. There we go. So there's our first one, and then we've got six more to go here. So if you come back and look at that chart, you can see there's the seven, chain six, and we've got seven, chain six, and then seven more, and then we'll be finishing it off. So that is our repeat here for row one. So while I crochet my next set of seven half double crochets, is there another question I can answer? Not so much a question, but um, you might have some more ideas as well. We were talking about uh, stitch markers in the chat and yes. Donna suggested using paper clips instead. Um, they work really well. And um, there was another great suggestion uh, to use safety pins. Yes, absolutely. If you don't have stitch markers available, safety pins and paper clips are a great solution. Failing that, even a little scrap of yarn that you can just kind of crochet over that little scrap of yarn sometimes or pull it through a stitch, that's really handy. Um, if you do crochet a lot, I do recommend that you eventually invest in some stitch markers. Um, they would they are sort of a safety pin style for sure, but they're not quite as pokey. They're not as sharp. Um, so not only can you not hurt yourself, but you can slide it right into the top of your stitch and you're not going to split your yarn apart with this with the safety pin um, for crochet. They do need to open. You'll if you go to the store and start searching for uh, stitch markers, you might see ones that are more of a circle that don't open. Those are just for knitting. So if you're new to crochet, you need the kind that open up, whether the ring itself is a split ring or the safety pin style like this. So I've got my next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half double crochets made here. So it's back to our repeat. We need to chain six, skip three, 
and half double crochet in the next seven. The original chain 39 length is, let me spread it out a little bit right here because I just saw that pop up. It's starting right there. It goes all the way across there. And then we came up and around. Remember we skipped over nine of those, the last nine chains we made to start half double crocheting back into that 10th one. So now we're working back across those initial 39 chains. So we'll chain six again, one, two, three. And remember these don't need to be real loose like our initial ones. In fact, we want these to be a little bit tighter. Four, five, six. Then come back here. We skip three, one, two, three, and half double crochet in the next seven again. So just as we were doing before. So if we come back to our chart, this is that third set of seven right there. And of course, if you're making the full size shawl, you'll have several more sets of seven until you get up to the end here. And I'm gonna take another look at the chart here in a moment and see just how many stitches are left. Let's see, make sure I don't got into that stitch correctly there. Yep, okay. I think I actually accidentally made a double crochet there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. One of my favorite things about crochet is if you've made a mistake, you can just remove your hook and pull on that string or thread or yarn right back to where you know you left off. And then put your hook right back in there and start going again. So is there another question I can answer here while we work across for these seven stitches? There's a question here from Brooke um, asking uh, where the original 39 chain length is. Uh, did you go back to that or are you I did. I, I did. We're working across that 39 right there. That is starting right there with the slip knot and all the way across. And that's what we're working across right now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our seventh. And I didn't recount my chain simply because I wanted to move on with the class, but I should. If we come back to our chart right here, we can see that last seven stitches. And again, chain six, skip three until you get to your end if you're making the full size uh, shawl here. But at the end, you can see there should be just three chains left right there for us to work into. So fingers crossed. Yes, <laughs> I did not lose count there at the end. We have three chains left on our beginning chain there. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain three now, not six. You can see that right there in our chart. We chain three, and then we're going to treble crochet into that very last chain. So we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And you can absolutely use the written instructions instead of the chart if you prefer. I just really love using charts myself uh, for fillet crochet patterns like this and grid patterns. It's um pretty easy for me to read. Um, but you know, if you want to follow along with the written instructions instead, they should match. It's just a different way of looking at the instructions. So I thought I'd include some chart reading tips here as we go. So now we need to treble crochet in that very last chain for a treble crochet. We yarn over twice, insert our hook in that very last chain, that very first one we made after our slip knot, yarn over and pull up our loop, and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. There we are. So now we have a treble crochet right there in the end. You can see it's a lot taller than the half double crochets. That's fine, it's all gonna work out. We have our first quote unquote treble crochet marked there with our stitch marker. So our ends match, and that is what it should look like, at least in miniature, at the end of row one. And see here, we've got our nine stitches that we skipped at the beginning. We skip three, chain six, skip three, chain six, skip two, chain three, and treble crochet in the last. There we are. So are there any questions I can answer before we move on to row two? There's a question here from Victoria asking, are you able to just use the written instructions because uh, she's never used charts before? Yeah, you can absolutely, like I say, follow along the written instructions, uh, say the same thing as in the chart, just in, just in words. This is just a picture that we can use to follow along instead. Um, but there are certainly written instructions here. So let's go ahead and take a look at 
row one, along with the written instructions. So you can see how that translates here as well. It says we chain 189. Of course, we did our abbreviated version. Then we half double crochet, one half double crochet in the 10th chain from the hook. So that's what we did right there. Then we know that counts as our treble in chain three. So we counted back so we'd have our chain three and we could mark the top of our treble. Then it says one HDC in each of the next six chains. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's those six half double crochets in the next six chains there. Then we chain six. And you'll notice right before that chain six is where we've got our asterisk. That means our repeat begins there. So we chain six, skip three, and half double crochet in each of the next seven chains. So that's right there. So then we go back to that asterisk until there are only three chains left. So we start again at the asterisk, chain six, skip three, half double crochet seven. Continue that across until we get to there are just three chains left. Right there. So then when there are just three chains left, it says chain three, which we did right there. Skip the next two chains, which we did right there, and one treble in the last chain. So that is the written instructions for row one. And you can see how that matches what happened in the diagram. So with that, we are ready for our second row, which starts as a chain two. And you'll see up here in the notes, the chain two does not count as a half double crochet. So that means that chain two is just going to count as our turning chain. So we are not going to be crocheting back into it. So we can make those two chains relatively tight. So one and two. In fact, I like to keep them a little bit tighter because um, otherwise I find that it just gets a little too loose with half double crochet. So now we're going to be turning and working back across row one to make row two. So we half double crochet in that first treble crochet right there. Right into the top of that stitch. Now, since we know that chain two did not count as a stitch, that means that half double crochet is going to count as our first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker right in the top of that one. So then I'll know when I come back along for row three, that is where I'm going to want to end that row. There we are. Then we are going to chain four. So let's chain four. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to skip the next half double crochet. So that means we skip everything before it as well. So if you look at the written instructions here, we chain two, we half double crocheted in the first stitch, we chain four, skip the next half double crochet and half double crochet in each of the next five half double crochet. So that means we skip that chain right there, all those chain three, and that first half double crochet, and we half double crochet in the second one of that group. So we make that first half double crochet there, and it is a little wobbly. Again, we've got a big section of chains here. So you take your time. I find it's helpful to sort of hold on to the beginning of that row with my non hook fingers a little bit, sort of pinch it off so it's a little bit more stable. So I can find that second stitch there. Let's try and get that on camera a little better. There we are. And go right in there for a half double crochet. So there's one. We need a total of five, if you remember. Two, three. Four. I need to pull up a little bit more yarn from my cake here. There we go. And five. So that means, let's see here. There we are. Yep, we've got one half double crochet there at the end that we didn't work into. So we worked into the center of those five right there. Then we're going to chain four again. One, two, three, four. Then we skip the next half double crochet, which would be this one right here. And half double crochet in the next uh, chain six space. Sorry, I'm reading the, long, the instructions along with you here. So we've chained four, and now we're going to work a half double crochet right into that chain six space. Let me get that centered right here. So what does that mean? We're not going to work into any one of these individual chains. 
we're just going to stick our hook right in that chain space. We go right in there and yarn over and pull up our loop and yarn over and pull through three. There we are. Then we chain four again. Whoops, <laughs> one, two, three, four. And that is the end of our repeat. We go back to the asterisk, which says skip the next half double crochet and one half double crochet in each of the next five half double crochets. So we yarn over again. It's a little easier to hold on to our work now and keep it stable. Skip that first one there, and we're going to work into the center five here. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so once again, we've got an extra one there at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now we chain four again. Whoops, one, two, three, four, and half double crochet in that chain six space again, right into that chain six space. Turn over and pull up our loop and finish that half double crochet right in that chain six space. So that is our repeat. We chain four again. And come over here and half double crochet in the next six. Or excuse me. Um, let me, sorry, let me check the chart. I was trying to follow along with the written instructions and that's what I get for trying to do that here. Yep, we have to skip that next one there and then half double crochet in the center five. Sorry, this is where I really love the chart. Sometimes in those written instructions, especially when I'm trying to read aloud and crochet at the same time, I can get a little lost, but I can glance over at this chart right here and see at a glance. See how we can see there's five, just worked in the center in each of those sections. That's what I'm talking about. I love, love having those pictures, but ideally it's even better when you have both. So you can jump back and forth just to check as you go. But I needed to flip it over and check my work there. And that's exactly what it's for. So now we've got our five half double crochets right there. We continue working that across, chain four, half double crochet in the next chain six section until you get right here to the end. You can see we've come to the end of our row. So I've got my five half double crochets there. I've chained four, I skipped the last one there. And now what we want to do is come all the way over here and work a half double crochet in the top of that treble. Now, as you'll remember, this, of course, is not a treble. This is our marked chain. So that right there is where we want to put that very last half double crochet. So I really love having that stitch marker there. So I can just slip my hook in there as well and put that final half double crochet right there. And with that in place, then you can go ahead and remove that stitch marker right there. So if we look again at our chart, you can see for row two here, we're coming back this way now, but we've just got five treble or five half double crochets centered on top of each of those sections with a half double crochet worked into each of those chain six spaces. So I'll try and lay it out here a little bit. It's a little, getting a little big to fit on camera here, but hopefully you can see if I pull that little end out of the way here. This is what it should look like at the end of row two. We've got our chain four spaces there. We've got a half double crochet worked in each of those chain six spaces. And our sets of five half double crochets there stacked on top. So uh, when you read the chart, you read uh, row one from left to right, or uh, well, you chain from left to right, and then you read row one from right to left, and then row two from left to right. So let's pull that back up again here. So you can see right here is the chain which comes along here, left to right. And then we come up and read this way across for row one. Then you can see that two there and read this way across for row two. See that three there, this way across for row three. Those are your little clues. Another thing to look for is there's that chain two that we have at the beginning of our half double crochet rows, that turning chain. We know that's how um, we begin our rows. So that's another clue that that's that end we start that one from. You can see those chain twos there as well. Uh, so were there any questions I could answer here before we begin row three? Yeah, there's a question here from Debbie just asking, what chain number is the beginning marker in? 
Uh, at the very, very beginning, um, the one that I just put this last, this one into, I, I think. think yeah, okay. I think so. <laughs> okay, that was the one, if you'll recall, when we were making row one, after we made that first half double crochet, it said that all these skipped chains counted as a treble crochet and a chain three. So we counted back those three chains before our first half double crochet and put a stitch marker in the fourth one. It's because we knew that was the top of our of our treble for our first row. So it was would have been, well, let's turn around and see here. It would have been the one, two, three, four, five, sixth chain counting up this way or the fourth chain counting back that direction however you wanted to look at it okay so let's move on to row three and let's go ahead and take a look at our chart before we begin so i can get a better idea of what we're doing too we're going to start again with our chain two for our turning chain and then we're going to work a half double crochet in that first stitch and a half double crochet into that chain four then we're going to chain four again, but this time we're just going to be working three half double crochets. You'll see how we're sort of making that little pyramid or pineapple shape there. We want to keep coming in. So we work three centered on top of those five, then we'll chain four. And now we're going to be working three centered on top of that one. So that means one in that chain space, one in top of that half double crochet, and one in the next chain space. Then we'll chain four again and have three on top there repeating on across. So we're going to be working in, once we get into the row, in sets of three half double crochets with four chains in between, but it's a little different at the beginning, which means it'll be a little different at the end. So let's go ahead, get our hook back in here, and we can start uh, row three. So I'm going to start again with a chain two. So one, two, there we are. And then I am going to half double crochet in that very first stitch. So right back in that half double crochet we finished our row with. And since we know, again, this is the first stitch now of row three, and that's where I'm going to want to stop row four, I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right in the top of that first half double crochet. There we are. Then we're going to pull up a little bit more yarn here and then half double crochet into that first chain four space. And this is again where the chart is really helpful because we're working to this chain four space. Anytime you're crocheting into a chain space, we know that that stitch can slide around within that chain four. It's not really anchored to a specific chain. So when you have the chart here, you can see how sure it's worked into the whole space, but you really want it to be up next to the other stitches that it's next to. So I'm not going to aim for the middle of this chain like I did in the previous row. I'm going to work into the chain space, but I'm going to keep it right next to the stitch I made before. There we are. So now we've got two stitches made for row three. Then we begin our repeat here. We chain four, one, two, three, four. And then we come to this section of five half double crochets. Remember, that's where we're going to be crocheting into next. We just want to crochet into those center three. So we skip that first one and half double crochet into the center three. There's, oops, I went to the wrong one. Went into the first one here. Let me try that again. There we are. Hold it out. We've got one, two, three, four, five. That one right there. That's going to be our second one. And then two. And then three. There we are. So now we are centered on top. So let me hold that out here. There we are. You can see right there, how about centered right on top. So then to continue that repeat, we want to chain four again, three, four. And now we're going to work into this chain four space. But remember, we looked at our chart. We want these three stitches right next to each other too. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the chain space right there. There we are. Then we half double crochet in the top of that half double crochet. And then we half double crochet in the next chain space. So again, even though we're in that space, we could put it anywhere in that space. We want to sort of just keep them all next to each other there. So we've got our set of three. So that is our repeat that takes us then across. Then we chain four again, two, three, 
four, go to the next one and do those center three, chain four again, and then you know work that on across. So I'm sure we've got lots of questions. So uh, what can I answer here as I make this next set of three? There's a question here from Leslie asking, uh, when you do the double crochet in the big hole, how close to the center does it have to be? And can you put a double crochet uh, in a stitch instead, making sure it's in the center? You absolutely can. Um, I just aim for it. And then the nice thing is after you're done crocheting, you can really lay out your fabric and sort of block it. And blocking means, um, for those who haven't done before, basically get it wet, sort of pin it out nice and flat, and just sort of push all those stitches where you want them to be and let it dry like that. And that'll help a lot with that. If you wanted, uh, generally, I would say yes. If you prefer working into the chain uh, rather than the chain space, that's a personal choice. It's totally fine. And I understand um, some patterns. I choose to do that as well because I really want to make sure it lands in the right spot. That said, it's going to be a little bit trickier here because we've got six chains. So there's not a center chain. We don't have an odd number. You would need to have an odd number to actually crochet that into the center chain. That's the the downfall of that idea for this particular pattern. Otherwise, I would say typically it is definitely a personal choice. And if you wanted to, let me put it this way, when you're crocheting your own project, you do it your way. If you wanted to crochet rather than six here, five real loosely and work into that center one, that would be a personal choice. And I bet you would love the finished result, but you can give it a try on your own. So we've got those three stitches here. So I need to chain four again and put three over here. Are there any questions I can answer while I do this next section? Yeah, there's a question here from Donna uh, asking, on the diagram, how do you tell if you are to crochet in the chain space versus the chain stitch? Um, sometimes that can be tricky. Um, some charts will have a different symbol um, that they really define that for you. Um, a good way to tell is um, sort of what I was talking about right there. Looking at this chart, I could tell right away that this wasn't going to be worked into an individual chain, because if you look at the bottom of that post, you can see how it goes. Let me try and get that a little bit closer so it's a little easier to see. And let me grab something that's not a big finger. There we are. So you can see how that post points right between two chains. That tells me right there it's not working into an individual chain. Um, also that there's an even number of chains here. I knew it wouldn't be going in there. Unfortunately, I don't have one with me um, that does differentiate to show you right now. Um, but, you know, if you're ever in question, that's the joy of having the written uh, pattern as well. So you can always hop over to the written instructions and kind of skim through and say, okay, in the chain space, got it. Then we know we're good. So that's that's the best idea. Just if you're not sure, go back and check the written instructions. If you're not sure about the written instructions, Go back and check the chart. It's the great thing about having the instructions there in two ways. So you can always go back and sort of check your work that way as well. So I hope that helps with that. I'm sorry I don't have one um, to show you. And not every chart is going to really say in the chart itself. So sometimes you kind of have to uh, work a couple repeats and see how it's working out and maybe try both ways and see which way you're going to prefer in your project at the end of the day. So you can see I worked one in that chain four space, one in the top of that half double crochet, and one in the next chain space. And here you could, if you wanted to work into that specific chain right next to it, you could. It just only becomes tricky with those chain sixes down there. So right now we've got our four, and then that brings us over here. So we've got a set of five. So we know just reading our work, that means we need to work those three center ones with half double crochets. So I always like to, let's see. Half double crochets can be a little tricky. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, half double crochet is a very popular stitch, but it can be very tricky when you are looking in rows to tell exactly where the top of your stitch is. For whatever reason, it just lines up a little differently. So when I am wondering, okay, wait, which one's the stitch and which one's the chain, especially in a project like this, sometimes I will flip it back over to the right side. And then it's a little bit easier to say, ah, yes, this is the top of that stitch, not this one right here. So never be afraid to flip your work back over if you get a little bit lost. Sometimes that can really give you those visual clues you need. So we've got three worked into the center of those five there. So we are coming to the end on our little um, sample here. So we're going to finish off our row three with chain four, one, two, three, four. 
And then we're going to work a half double crochet in that chain space again. But remember, we want to keep it real close to the edge here so that we have it right at the end so that these chain spaces are nice and open. And then we have double crochet in the top of that marked stitch right there. We just go right in there and make that second half double crochet. So you can see those really want to be next to each other anyway. So then we can go ahead and pull that last stitch marker out of the way. And I'll lay this out. And there is row three. So that's what it should look like at the end of row three. And you can see we're really starting to create that pineapple shape that we're looking for in this pattern. So are there any questions I can answer um, before we go to row four? Yeah, there's a question here from Luann asking, uh, if you wanted to do this design as a scarf instead of a shawl, would this swatch length work or would you need to make it wider? Um, well, let's see. Right now, I'm going to guesstimate that this is about a foot wide. So it depends how wide you like your scarves. Some people like your, their scarves really wide. Some people like their scarves closer to six to eight inches. I'd say 12 inches. We're approaching super scarf territory here for sure. I think, uh, remember a few years ago when super scarves were all the rage, they uh, started at about 10 inches wide. So here I'd say we've got a good 12 inches or so. In fact, I can check it. Yep. Because I know that I know the size of a sheet of paper. So if you wanted your scarf this wide, this would be a great size to start with. If you wanted it wider, just keep adding according to that stitch multiple. Remember, it's a multiple of 10 plus nine. So that it could be 19. It could be 29. If you wanted it a little bit narrower, that would probably be about here or so. You can get about a, you know, that would probably be more of a standard width scarf after 29 stitches or so. Um, or you could do 39 as we've done here. 49, 59, 69. This is a really easy one to come up with a multiple for. So any of those numbers, um, as I say, the full size shawl is 189. So you can keep going. You could turn this into a blanket. In fact, if you want to just keep going even wider uh, than the shawl itself, the measurement for the finished shawl is uh, 55 inches wide. Um, and we're working in long rows here. So if you wanted a throw size, you could even just keep going and make it just keep going at keep adding uh, more cakes of yarn and add more rows and that would probably be a great throw size right there so you can definitely thanks to that stitch multiple play with this pattern quite a bit so let's go ahead and take a quick look here at our chart for row four you can see here we just finished row three we came back this way and then we've got row four and I realize we're down to our last 10 minutes. So we're not going to get all the way through our little sample here. But what we've been doing is what we're going to be continuing to do. It's just half double crochets, chain fours, half double crochets. We're going to continue building up those shapes. So let's see how far we can get here in row four together. We look at the beginning. We've got a chain two, half double crochet in the first stitch, then half double crochet in the second stitch then half double crochet in that first chain four right there. So we're building this next section out in our little grid mesh pattern here. So again, we start with a chain two and then turn or turn and chain two, however you like to do it. I think everybody does it their own way here. Well, I guess it'd be about 50-50. Then we yarn over it and work right back into that first stitch for our first half double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right on that one. With those chains and things, it can be very easy to accidentally, uh, you know, mistake where your stitches should go. So those stitch markers, it takes a little extra time, but they're just so handy. Then we want a half double crochet in the next stitch. Should be the top of that one right there. There's our second one. And then we're going to half double crochet right into that chain four space. And we're going to keep it right next to it because that's how it shows it in the chart. There we are. Then we're going to do our chain four. One, two, three, four. Need to pull up a little bit more in there. That was getting tight. And now when we jump over to this section of three half double crochets here, because this is one that's narrowing as we look at it, we're going to put one just in that middle half double crochet right there. So just one guy right there in the middle. There we are. See, kind of almost like a little birthday cake, but in crochet, they tend to call them pineapples. Then we are going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. And then 
we jump all the way over here and remember how we had one in the chain four space and then in the stitches we're gonna do the same thing here we're building this one out now we need five stitches so we're going to put one in that chain four space right there and then a half double crochet in each of those next three stitches so there's one and two and three there we are and then we need one in that next chain four space so we did five total you can see how we're building this one up and out so now we chain four again one two three four and we hop over here we've got a set of three and you'll see if you look at your work how that's coming in that means we're just going to half double crochet right in that center one there we are pull up a little bit more yarn chain four again one two three four now we jump over here let's take a look at our work we can read our work we don't even need the chart right now we've got three half double crochets there that means we're building up and out we can see how that's growing in our rows so we want to put one in that chain four space one in the next three stitches there's one two three one in that next chain space there we are and if we hold it up you can see how that's building out nicely sort of the opposite this is going in and this one's coming out then we chain four again one two three four we come to this section we can see how that's going in so we want to put one just right there in the middle and we're coming up to the end which is always a good time to check your pattern we've got four more here with two three four chains and then we're right here at the end of our work we want to match what we did at the beginning so that means we put one right in that chain space but right near the end there we go and then one in each of these last two half double crochets there's that one stitch and then here is the last stitch and it's marked right there with my stitch marker in it so it's easy to see that's where I stop and I don't get mixed up with any of those chain twos so I'll go ahead and remove that stitch marker and I think I'm just going to put that right in that loop that's another thing I love stitch markers for if you have to put your work down I don't know about you guys kids family pets things happen right and it's so easy to pull out our mistakes and crochet but that means when we put down our work sometimes those stitches the projects falls off the table the kids take off running go ahead and put that stitch marker if you've got it through that working loop and I like to put it around the yarn as well and now if it falls off the table or the kids go running your work won't come undone and you won't lose all that work you've done so there it is after row four and now you can really see how those pineapples are forming here you can see how these ones are sort of shrinking up and these ones are growing and if we come back and look at our chart you can really see how a char crochet chart is a visual representation of what we're crocheting you can see these little shapes here and you can see those same shapes here that right there that little pyramid is that little pyramid that we crocheted right there so by looking at the chart and comparing it to the written pattern not only can you make sure that you're understanding each one correctly but you can really see at a glance with practice what that fabric is going to be looking like you can see these big open spaces here where we've got our chains you've got all these stitches together where we've got our nice solid patterns so it's just a great way um to increase your crochet abilities and open up the other kinds of patterns you have because once in a while you run into a pattern um particularly patterns from other countries where they will only have um, the chart with just a few notes so when you learn how to read charts it just really opens up a whole world of patterns that you can make but you can see here how you uh work up through there i do realize the yarn was a little dark in person it's actually more of a dark gray more <laughs> rather than a black i didn't realize it was going to show up quite so black uh in person um i was actually more concerned with finding a yarn that wasn't so much white unfortunately most of the karen cakes i had on hand were mostly white and i was afraid that would disappear against our background so i do apologize this is a little bit dark but hopefully um 
we can see how that really comes together and how that matches both the Britain pattern and the chart. So it is um, just a great way to check your work there and go back and forth between the instructions and follow it. But you can see here, we're just doing the same things we're doing. It's just chains and half double crochets, chains and half double crochets. And of course, it's all written out for you in the pattern as well. So are there any other questions? I know we've only got three minutes left, so. Yeah, uh, I do have uh, one question okay. uh, earlier uh, from Cynthia asking, can you explain how the drape of the shawl will be different when using three weight versus four weight? Uh, well, you know, it depends on the hook that you use with each one. Um, I went up two hook sizes from recommended when I made my little swatch here, um, which is the same number of sizes they went up um, in the written pattern, the designer. Let me flip this over here again. You can see here on the written pattern, it calls for Karen Skinny Cakes. It doesn't say it on this, but it's a three weight uh, with an I hook. So when I looked it up, it called for, I believe, a G hook. So um, this is two sizes up, H then I, yes. So when I pulled out this yarn and I saw that it recommended an H hook, I went up two sizes as well to a J hook. If you were to use um, the same size hook, an I hook with a thicker yarn, you were going, you were going to get a much thicker uh, shawl. If you're using this J hook with the bigger yarn or the I hook with the thinner yarn, you should have the same amount of drape, um, but you are going to overall have a bigger and heavier shawl with the bigger yarn and the bigger hook. I hope that made sense. There was, there was a lot of factors involved there, but um, it's just something to play with. So yeah, right now, like for instance, if I were making this in the recommended hook and yarn size, this wouldn't be 12 inches wide. This, this would probably be closer to uh, 10 or so. Uh, in the lighter weight yarn. But when you use a bigger yarn and a bigger hook, um, you might get the same amount of drape since we did go up the same amount uh, in this yarn, but the overall project will be bigger. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I did see a question come up. Why is the inlay pattern called a pineapple? Um, that is a great historical question about crochet. And I don't know that I have a great answer for you that I know is correct, but if I were to guess, um, it would be, uh, well, because you're right, these look more like diamonds to me. These look more like diamonds than they do like pineapples. But um, pineapples became very popular around the Victorian area, which was when crochet really, really, really took off. And uh, pineapples were a big symbol of good luck back then. So I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't call that shape a pineapple and crochet, just sort of jumping on that bandwagon even back then. So as you continue and finish the pattern here, just to finish it up, You'll work through row, uh, row 10th. They have instructions through. You repeat the third through the 10th rows. So rows three through 10 right here are your repeat. After you've made row 10, you can just right, jump right back to row three. You can see here, it just repeats on up from there. But I'm afraid we're out of time. So I wanna thank you guys so much right here. You can see the repeats right there, the repeats in the written instructions as well. Repeats rows three through 10. So you can follow your instructions from there. We'll go ahead and bring it back to the face cam here, I think, <laughs> so I can say goodbye. And I don't make everybody a little seasick. There we go. We'll go ahead and move the camera off then. So once again, thank you for joining me. The pattern was the Karen Geometric Grid Crochet Shawl. So there should be links in the chat or you can find this pattern on yarnspirations.com. Thanks so much for watching and have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag MakeitWithMichaels and hashtag Yanspo. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on Michaels.com and the recording of today's class at Michaels.com slash classes. Thanks again, Tamara, and thanks everyone for joining us. Okay. Have a great night.